Welcome to the first video of our How to Build an Airplane series. This video is going to be an introduction to the airplane project and cover some of the basics of flight. In this series, we're going to go through the entire process to design and build an airplane, although a model airplane. We're going to start with the requirements for our airplane, cover the basics of flight, go through the entire design process, go through the obligatory build montage, and then finally a flight test. I'm just going to start this out with, there's a lot of information on aircraft design and I've read practically none of it. I've googled a few things and primarily used Aircraft Design and Conceptual Approach by Dan Raymer as my guide for this project. It's a pretty good book if you're interested in this subject, the information can be found below. Why am I making an airplane? Well, as you'll see in future videos, it covers a lot of information, fluid mechanics, and some structures. As well as, I mean, it's an airplane, so it's always going to be somewhat cool. And by far the coolest part about this project is the fact that we're going to be able to do it all using basic algebra. The aerospace industry is always seen as having the most cutting edge technology, and it's really nice to see that we can build a project that falls in that industry uh, using some pretty simple math along the way. This is a project I've also been wanting to do for a few years since my senior design project for my engineering degree was the SAE Air Design Competition. In this competition, we had to design and build an aircraft that was designed to lift the maximum payload within a certain box dimension, take off and land within a certain distance, as well as a few other constraints we had. At the start of every engineering project, we have to lay out our goals and constraints. The goals are the minimum limits we need for this to be a success. For this project, I really only have two. The first, obviously, is to fly and hopefully land safely along with that. And the second is to carry a GoPro for some air photography during the flight test. I chose the GoPro because I didn't expect to have a whole lot of payload capacity on this aircraft. At the end of this project, I did find that I did have some extra and maybe we can go back later and reuse some of these parts uh, to add some additional payload. Constraints of the box that we have to operate in. They're going to present additional challenges during the design process, but they also make some of the decisions easier for you. Our constraints list is usually much longer than our goals list. Um, in this project, we're going to have four main constraints. First is the gross weight of the model airplane cannot exceed more than 55 pounds. This is a rule set forth by the Academy of Model Aeronautics. You can exceed 55 pounds, but then you're going to need FAA certifications, and government bureaucracy is not something you want to deal with. The next two I have are linked. The final aircraft needs to be easy to fly, because I've never flown a model airplane before. One of the ways we make this easy to fly is to fly relatively slow. This also gives us the advantage of being able to operate our airplane in a much smaller field. And last but certainly not least is the one constraint that literally every project has, or should at least, and that's cost. I'm shooting for this whole thing to cost less than $450. I'm well aware of the fact that you can go out and buy a kit that will fly for much less, but the budget we had in college was about $1,500 to build this airplane. This aircraft is going to be about 30% of the size, so I'm shooting for 30% of the budget. Now that we have our goals and constraints laid out, let's talk about some of the basics of flight. What you have to do is slap a curved piece of metal or wood onto a tube, go really fast, unicorns fart some rainbows, magic happens, and bam, you're flying. Now that's not really how it works. The best place to start is to talk about the four main forces that are going to be exerted on our airplane. First, everyone's favorite heartless bitch, gravity. This is the total weight of the aircraft that we're going to have to overcome with our second force, lift. Lift is generated by the curved surfaces that we call wings. If you want to know how airfoils make lift, I can cover some of that when we get to the airfoil section, but it may be its own video due to its complexity. Lift, in order to be generated by an airfoil, needs a fluid to flow around it. When the fluids are flowing, drag is created. Drag is actively trying to slow our aircraft down and, along with gravity, causes your airplane to crash. Good news is we have something to combat the drag, and that's thrust. Thrust is what pushes our aircraft through the air and keeps the airplane moving fast enough to generate the required amount of lift. Now that we've covered all our forces, we need to talk about how we can move our airplane through the air. We have three ways we can rotate our airplane. We have roll, pitch, and yaw. Roll is going to be the left-right tilt of the aircraft. Pitch is moving the nose up or down. And yaw is turning the nose of the airplane left or right, similar to steering a car. Having control of your airplane means having control of when your airplane rotates in these three axes. That's it for our first video, where we discussed motivation, goals and constraints of the project, and some of the basics of flight. You can click for part two of our How to Design and Build an Airplane series, where we're going to cover some of the basic layout of the airplane. If you have questions, comments, concerns, or ideas for future non-airplane projects for us to design, leave them in the comments below. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter, at Engineering. Thanks for watching.